Good morning, people. It's starting to actually feel a little springtime here. Uh, it's been cold and wet, but uh, now finally even the uh, local mountains are agreeing with me and they are starting to shed their snowpack. The river flow rates are up, lots of debris in the river. No flooding yet, but uh, it's busy out there. Um, lots of uh, busyness and debris coming down the river in the uh, world news and the geopolitical situation as well. And of course the navigator in me always pays attention to those signals. One of the things that informs my worldview, um, and for those of you who have followed the conversation here, I suppose, I mean especially over the last year, pre-cancellation um, and, and deletion, um, well, my model's based on the idea, uh, the model that I'm operating by which to navigate the moment is based on the idea that a controlled power down of the economy is going to be necessary to uh, controlling interests in order to navigate the scarcity bottleneck that uh, human civilization is now approaching. And I understand that to some people who have not um, really contemplated being in the awkward situation of trying to steer a ship uh, in adverse circumstances. They've never actually had to make the kinds of hard decisions that are necessary and often even common within people that actually have to have to uh, make real choices and they have real authority and they have real actionable strategies. I mean, in human life for the average plebeian, we don't have a lot of uh, personal autonomy and authority, so we have a tendency to th see things very differently. But if you've ever been in a situation where you had some degree of actual meaningful, actionable authority, well, then you understand sometimes hard choices need to be made. And here's a, a, a practical example from... Um, I don't know, maritime history. It's a kind of event or kind of accident that's not really that uncommon, so it's the kind of thing that uh, captains who are involved in it uh, do discuss. And that is uh, being the captain of a, of a ferry, especially like a foot ferry with lots of passengers on board. It's a very, very, very dangerous set of circumstances. Um, and as a thought model, approximates the world and the civilization that we uh, inhabit, uh, well, surprisingly closely. And here's the problem. The problem is that if you're the captain and you've got a small crew and, say, several some hundreds of individuals on board, all of whom don't understand anything about the handling of the ship, but are motivated by... Um, a will to survive and uh, what have you, just like you would expect. You have situations sometimes where on the uh, ferry boat, let's say that a fire breaks out someplace on the boat, okay, and the fire itself may not be that uh, dangerous. It might be completely containable, in fact. But what happens is that all these hundreds of passengers freak out because of the fire and they run to the other side of the boat and then the ferry boat tips over and sinks. So there's always the danger that the uncontrolled organic response of the masses of asses due to some kind of unforeseen but actually potentially manageable crisis the, the, the stampede response um, can imperil the entire ship. I mean, to be completely clear, let's say that there were no passengers on board and you had a small fire that broke out and the crew could get on it and there was a fire suppression system that worked, you'd have that fire licked. It wouldn't be a problem. But if you've got 500 panicking people running around willy-nilly without any means of controlling them, they, by their own just sheer mass, will create a hazard that you can't deal with. And again, it happens not infrequently with uh, passenger ferries because everybody freaks out. They run away from the hazard or to something and um, 
boat gets overloaded and it flips over and it sinks. Now, it could also be the case that, let's say that you're a passenger hanging out with your family on one of these ferries, and somebody, some forward-thinking individual raises the question, huh, I wonder what the captain and the crew would do if all the passengers on board started to panic about something. And of course, somebody somebody who's going to be quite the little like stuff muffin is going to say, oh, well, they have a plan for that, I am sure. Don't think that they're conspiring. That sounds dangerously close to paranoia. It sounds like a conspiracy theory that the captain and crew would conspire to some kind of personal survival strategy should we all want to panic and start running around. You know, those kinds of people? Well, look, I'm telling you, I hang with that crowd. They conspire. We conspire. Because we know that the threat is real and that things happen in the world. And if you've got tremendous numbers of people that you can't control, self-preservation becomes the issue. You, there's nothing you can do once you've lost control of the herd. Because, again, the herd itself is a bigger hazard than the organic problem that you're trying to uh, deal with that created the stampede response. Oh, I'm, I'm here to tell you that captains think about this stuff because they potentially have to deal with it. And the kinds of circumstances that can create a stampede response are a lot more common than you think. And over a career of some decades, it's almost guaranteed that you as a professional mariner are going to find yourself in dealing with precisely these sets of circumstances. It's almost unavoidable. Now, of course, the situation that we find ourselves in, in terms of the circumstances of late stage um, industrial civilization on an overcrowded planet with uh, resource scarcity, um, looming across all basically sectors. Um, the situation that we face is not unlike that that you would find yourself on a overloaded passenger ferry where there is a potential of some kind of organic event occurring somewhere in the world that could create a uncontrolled, unmitigated herd response or stampede that if it doesn't flip the whole works over, certainly runs the risk of dispossessing the captain and crew from the ability to steer the ship. Like, that's very real. It's very possible. And I think a person would have to be incredibly naive to believe that those kinds of contingencies, contingencies have not been discussed. Because you would discuss them if you were in the situation where you meaningfully had to do something about what's going on and you had the ability to act to some degree. There are people like that, just like there are captains of passenger ferries. They have the uh, ability and the actionable autonomy to act. There are individuals who can do that on a global scale, of course. And one would have to be incredibly, again, really naive to assume that individuals who had uh, access to the information that uh, is freely available and the ability to, uh, to meaningfully act, that they wouldn't, right? Again, part of the reason that uh, we as little individuals have a tendency to hide our head in the sand, most of us, and not be well informed about the circumstances in the world is most of us are in a situation where we can't actually actually do anything about it but that's not everybody's situation and again it's like the uh, captain and crew and their mindset versus the passengers on board the, the captain and crew have a completely different headspace about the handling of the vessel right they know what they're doing they have the ability to make choices and what have you the other person's outside their element. They don't know what to do. They, even, even if they knew what to do, they're not in a position to do anything about it. Don't for a minute think that people that are uh, privileged enough to have the ability to make real choices that they won't. That's a projection of the helplessness of the average person, um, and it's a very, very dangerous one. So as a little thought experiment to prime the pump, 
it doesn't hurt to contemplate what you would personally do in the position of the ferry captain with his crew. Like, what would you actually do? If you were in a situation where some hazard came up that ran the real risk of creating a panic response on board the boat, and the panic response itself um, would strip you of the ability to uh, manage the crisis, the real organic crisis, and potentially your own survivability. What would you do? And I think it's clear to understand, too, that um, things will go awry really quite quickly. Meaning that, let's say that you had the situation where, again, a fire breaks out in the engine room. You have really moments to deal with both the passenger problem and the fire problem before you have both a fire problem and a passenger problem. So there will be things that you will do and that you will tell the passengers who are worried now about all the smoke coming out of all the ventilators, <laughs> right? There are things that you're going to tell them, but they're not going to be truthful, okay? They're going to be designed precisely to keep people in their seats just as long as possible because if people don't stay in their seats, then you've lost the whole thing. But the second people get up and they start running around and running amok, then what do you do? Well, at that point, you know the ship is lost and you are going to cover your own ass. Typically, that's what happens. Because... Um, well, what's the alternative? So anyway, just a little thought experiment for you um, to contemplate. Um, I think it's worth thinking about it in great detail and actually actionable detail, not theoretically. What would you actually do? Well, I mean, what is typically done, right? Um, you inform people of the risks, but you downplay them. You give people little bureaucratic roles um, that make them feel safe, like uh, you become the lifeboat manager or some team, team captain of some kind of something on the boat. You have lots of horns and authority figures and people in little outfits standing around that give you the impression of safety. <laughs> That's what you do in a ferry boat, right? Stuff like that. Um... If you had to, you would put people through, like, lifeboat drills. Um, in fact, if it's really, really serious, what you're going to do is you're going to actually create false hazards to make sure that some people run one direction in the ship and other people run another direction in the ship just to keep the load benefit uh, balanced because once the panic starts, you've got to make sure that it's somewhat randomized. Anyway, it's worth thinking about and it's definitely worth thinking about if you start to look at the world and the geopolitical situation that's emerging with fuel prices, with food scarcity and potentially famine, with all of these other circumstances that are bouncing around out there in the world. Um, take what you've learned from your thought experiment of being a ferry captain and trying to deal with those kinds of issues in a, uh, the most constructive manner you can. And imagine then what you might do if you were put in charge of the whole big ship itself. I think a lot starts to make a lot more sense. Anyway, cheers, people.